today. From Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's week 11 of the NFL on EA Sports. The Carolina Panthers taking on the Arizona Cardinals. The Carolina Reigns have arrived as we are inside a soggy Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we look at this Panther ball club as they interplay here. They come in on a pretty good roll here, winners of three straight. And last week they put together a three-touchdown victory and were never challenged in that. Hey, the NFL season has hit high gear, and off we go in Week 11 on EA Sports. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. So out come the Cardinals now for their opening drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. I read something prepping for this game that he said prior to, and I think he really said it a few months ago, where he talked about he wants to have the type of season that at the end, he's buying gifts for all the guys who helped him <laughs> along the way. And I know that the team wants to hold him to that and really get into his wallet. But pressure comes in. He's brought down. It's a Panther sack. A bad start there. A big loss on their first play from scrimmage. It's second down. But we knew coming in it was going to be a long afternoon if they weren't able to hold up against this pass rush, huh? What we didn't know is that protection was going to spring a leak on the first play from scrimmage. Got after him right out of the gate. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. And oh, right away, he lost the football. And the offense will cover this one up, but they'll be pushed back inside their own 10. Oh, able to fall on it, but look where they recovered it. That's a big loss. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage, but I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. The good news, they kept the ball. Bad news, it's third and long. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. It'll be a 39-yard punt, four on the return. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. So now here are the Panthers with excellent field position to start off. They'll be led out by a man who rewrote Brett Favre's passing records at Southern Miss. It's Nick Mullins. Not sure what you thought, but I thought it was appropriate when he walked into our meeting with his arm totally encased in ice because he threw five touchdown passes last week and won the NFC Offensive Player of the Week award. Yeah, but reading the paper this morning, and he said, gosh, I actually thought I should have got six or seven. But still, it was an amazing performance a week ago. Boy, I'll tell you what, if he thought he should have had six or seven, that's a guy that's an absolute perfectionist, not just greedy. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Brings up third down. Out of the gun now on third down. Open man is Westbrook complete. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. They'll look to throw here on first down. Looking for Allen. He's got him on the slam. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. To Keenan Allen. A quick check on the numbers for Keenan Allen from last week. Six catches, 64 yards, and a touchdown. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. Only a yard on the pickup, so from a good situation on second and two, it's now third and one. A gain of a yard brings up third and one. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. They're able to convert with a gain of four. And this is just a little touch pass. It's in the receiver in motion, just kind of tap it forward to him. Now, it doesn't turn into a huge play, but they do pick up a first down, a nice, consistent gain. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Hits his target, the tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Not much there, only a yard. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Eighth play of the drive, forthcoming, and they need eight yards on third down. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this is complete. It's Allen. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. This is just a 24-yard attempt. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And the Panthers stay claim to a 3-0 lead. nothing. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. Receiving team. That holding call set him up with not great field position. Not at all when you tack on the penalty. With that field position after the return wasn't terrific, it's not a great starting field position as well. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Amos on the tackle. Eight yards on the pickup. Brings up second and two at the 23-yard line. Eight yards the gain on last run. Here's second and a couple. Now a handoff looking right. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It'll be a gain of nine, and it's going to yield a new set of downs. A gain of nine yards. First down, Cardinals. Three nothing after one on EA Sports. Panthers three, Cardinals nothing. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. Out of the gun they'll look to throw, and he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. 
They'll contain him to just four. Second down. To number 22. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 36-yard line. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. A loss on that play, and now third down gets tougher. Third and six. This defense has really flown around in the first half. They've gotten to the ball carrier before they can really get started. Offense got to come up with something else in order to try and get this running game going. The Panthers turn to their nickel set here as they get ready for third down. Steps away to his left. And he's got a first down and then some at midfield. Well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. Back to throw now on second and ten. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 23. 15 yards that time, and the Cardinals move the chains. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. It's now second and six at the Panthers' 19-yard line. To Jefferson on the slant. And the Cardinals are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry? And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. A great effort there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Cardinals have taken the lead. Great call to hand that one off, and his running back did the rest. Someone read their keys correctly, and on the defensive side of the ball, they certainly did not because they really essentially were just going to swarm the quarterback. They kind of guessed themselves out of the play, the and guess who benefited? The, the guy with the football. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. A 10-play drive that time. And in the end, it's capped off by a 7-yard run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. The Panthers take over first and 10 at their own 24 yard The line. Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to, because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. It's a gain of five. Second and five. Second and five. 
And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. The Panthers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. He'll find his running back, Edwards Alaire. No gain at all on the play there, and that'll bring up fourth down. No gain on the play. It's fourth down. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. It'll be a 40-yard punt, eight on the return. And the Cards will take over, first and ten. Arizona getting ready to go as they take the field. And it's only November, but the playoffs, we know how it works. They'll be here before you know it. If it ended today, they would be the number one seed. And that's a great spot to be in, but I love the phrase, if it ended today. And I'll guarantee you, that's what they've discussed in their locker room, in their meeting rooms. Yeah, we know where we'd be if it ended today, but we also know it's not ending today. Right. So they've got to continue to play the type of ball that put them in the spot where they're number one in their conference. No game on the play. Second and ten. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Complete. Jefferson the target. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. A gain of ten brings up third and On ten. third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Forced out to his left. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Now a timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. On first down, he'll drop to throw. The Panther rush too strong. They get there and take him down. Now the card's going to call another timeout. Their second as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. Here we go on second and 12. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. And that is incomplete. And that is too far out in front of his intended target. Incomplete. On is the punter Scott here as he gets this one away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Carolina offense about ready to go. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. That catch good for only a couple. It's second and eight. They'll throw now on the final play. And his throw here is incomplete. So we've reached intermission here in a low-scoring game. 7-3 is our score. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things starting to get interesting in this final weekend before Thanksgiving. So let's see what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin down in the Big Easy, the L.A. Rams and New Orleans. And it's the Rams who are out in front as those teams approach halftime. Baker Mayfield with three touchdown passes. Next, we're off to Baltimore to check on the Ravens at home at M&T Bank Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Browns in that one. Stephon Diggs, a touchdown reception. Finally, let's get to Indianapolis to check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And as you see, they are currently all tied with the visiting Denver Broncos. 
Meanwhile, in our game, not a lot of offense to go around. 7-3 is our score. Will we see things open up in the second half? To find out, we get it back to our guys in the booth, Brandon God and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half, and we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. And with the way this offense has played thus far, to be frank, they got to feel pretty grateful to be in the ball game. I would agree with you totally because they've done all of nothing offensively in this game. Yet, they still find themselves in a position on this drive where a touchdown can give them the lead. They need to take advantage of it. Now they're still looking for that first touchdown here in the third quarter. All they have so far, the field goal. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. Here's Edwards Hilaire. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. No gain on the play. That now brings up a very interesting, identical situation on third down. Yeah, people couldn't see us on camera, but I love how you motion to me like, throw the ball. This is a great shot to take it. Second and short. Maybe take a big shot downfield. Instead, they ran it. Didn't work out for them very well. They should listen to you, partner. He needed a yard. That's exactly what he got. Earns him a new set of downs. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operated. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw here. That to his running back, Edwards Hilaire. Oh, the ball is out. Edwards Hilaire lost it. And the Cardinals have got it going the other way. And they bring this one back. A scoop and score, a fumble recovery touchdown for Arizona. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave them a comfortable lead. Point after try, forthcoming. This one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. A look at the running back, the man out of the backfield as he gears up to go again. Looking for a bounce back, had the fumble a moment ago that went for a touchdown the other direction. See if he can get back in rhythm. And you have to be very careful about having too quick of a hook with really good players. I did a guy's game in high school where he fumbled three times in the first quarter, finished with over 300 yards on the night, later ended up in the NFL. If you've got a talented back, give it back to him. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. And he'll give it here to his running back. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train. The cards get to him here. He's brought down for a sack. Aaron Donald, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs, None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. There's the Panthers punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 
Fair catch called for. No gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. They call it 38 yards on the punt. No return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. And I guess the question, Charles, is what's the formula for keeping him better protected? Because as we see, the protection, it's struggle. And normally what you get is renewed determination. When the, when the big guy gets hit, that usually sparks people. Hey, we can't let this happen anymore. They take it personally. He's not supposed to be on the ground. But that hasn't been the case so far in this game. So maybe they've got to figure out how do they get rid of the ball faster to help out the offensive line so he doesn't get hit as much. And we'll see if they can keep him off the ground now going forward. 46-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's going to get this pretty close to a first down, stopped at the Panthers 39. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. It's a gain of six. First down, Cardinal. Back to throw now on first down. This one brought in by Jefferson. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. A gain of five brings up second and five at the Panthers' 35-yard line. Now a throw here, hauled in. The pass. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. A gain of four, and it's third down. And again this time to the tailback. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take him the distance, but in short yardage, trying to pick up first downs, that big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? to throw it and down inside the 15 shy of the 10 that goes for 14 yards first down Cardinals and the Cardinal first down three quarters in the books this is the National Football League on EA Sports and we're back now in Charlotte it's Cardinal football they're also out in front of the scoreboard as we get set for the fourth Back to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. It's now second and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Cardinals now adding on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. And it's 21 to 3. The kick is good. So that drive Thanks in total score, eight plays. And it was capped off Panthers by a 12 yard three. touchdown run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. With it on the return now, here's Westbrook. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. Remember, they have won three straight, but getting to four straight does not appear to be in the cards as they are in a big fourth-quarter hole. Come out 
throwing here on first down. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still work Pressure comes, and the Cardinals bring him down. Aaron Donald make that now eight sacks for him on the season. I remember throughout my career here, defensive coaches always say, guys, you got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. The Panthers on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This will be third and forever. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Looking for his running back, and he's got him. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. We'll call that a 43-yard punt, two on the return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. So here are the Cardinals to take over. They are working on that very impressive nine-game win streak, looking to get it to 10 as they've got the lead here, first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. A three-yard pickup. And it's third down. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. He was brought down at the 45-yard line. Two yards on the play. First down, Cardinals. the shotgun now here's an inside give and just no chance of turning the corner he can only get back to the line of scrimmage second and ten coming up Carolina native this is Bryce Love and no room to maneuver there give him a yard up to the 47 they do get a yard there but only a yard leaves him with third and nine looming the Cardinals on third down they've converted four times out of six not bad this is third and nine middle of the field to Jefferson and they'll get him down as he's inside the 40 that goes for 14 yards, first down Cardinals. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep. Confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. So from Panther territory now, it's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. A gain of two brings up second and eight. Shotgun handoff now for Love. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. They need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Staying on the ground, it's Love. 
And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Call it a gain of five. Fourth down now. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. Cliff Kingsbury, part of that new breed of head coaches. And his guys are going to go for it. They'll try and run for it. And boy, is he close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he's short of the line to gain. The Cardinals unable to convert there on fourth down. And the Panthers will get the football back. So first and 10 now from the 30. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that saying, oh, wow. Talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule. That if someone and the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Third down and ten yards. Back to throw again. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. Keep in mind, he had the three-interception game last week, so we requested to talk with him this week. He was all smiles. He's still all smiles. Yeah, we didn't jinx him at all, did we? No. Because ordinarily that happens, uh, <laughs> things fall off, but not in this case. I think a lot of it goes back to his technique. His ability to see the quarterback throw the ball while understanding where the receiver is running his route allows him to make a lot of plays on the football, and he's taken it away at a really high rate. Second and 11. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals. And, you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter. But second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them scoreless. Brandon, if you throw a shutout for quarters two, three, and four, you win a lot of games in this league. And this felt a lot like, almost like if you say baseball, and the pitcher goes through the lineup the first time, and the hitters get to see him. And then they come out after that, and the bats start blazing, right? I think they saw their best stuff in the first quarter and just shut everything down from that point on. What a great convincing performance. So for the Cardinals, they keep on rolling 10-0 now to start the year. And they will head home next week to take on the L.A. Chargers. Meanwhile, for Carolina, they're going the wrong way as this will drop them to 3-7 now in the year. And they'll be at home for one next week as the Atlanta Falcons come to town. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.